please welcome toastmaster sara taher she will be talking about offices and meeting roles in meeting welcome toastmaster sara screen is yours uh, thank you so much master of ceremonies <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen toastmasters guests of available new toastmasters and toastmasters to be good morning to you all i'm grateful for you all to be here when i woke up i was really angry and mad at the world and now i'm just happy to be around you myself toastmaster sara Taha. in my segment i will be discussing two main parts the first part going to be the meeting roles and the second part will be the officer's role now anyone presented here in this training i'm assuming that you at least attended a toastmaster meeting if you are a new member or you are planning to be a member now when you go to a meeting you have a group of people called meeting roles they are responsible of carrying this meeting into success they are responsible of handling any situation that come in this meeting to ensure to achieve the target and the goal of the meeting. Now, let, let's start one by one. Let me explain to you each role, even though I know some of them might be very, very familiar to you, yet I know some other roles need more elaboration. Starting with the off counter. The off counter is the person who will listen to you very carefully to catch something called the post fillers. Now, what are the post fillers? They are, when you say, ah, uh, mm, and take a moment to think in your speech. Some people don't use the ah uh, and the um, they use something I like to call the safe word. They have a word that they run behind it when they're trying to think. Some people use, for example, basically. Then you will realize throughout their speech, they repeat the word basically several times. And that's what the ah counter is trying to detect so that in the future, when they give a speech, it's going to be empty as much as possible of ah and post fillers. Moving forward, we have the grammarian. The grammarian is the person, as the name indicates, who check the quality of the grammar, who check your language and ensure that you are speaking very fluently in front of people. One of his duty as well is to provide word of the day. Word of the day is a word that might be new to you, but you will use it throughout the meeting. And the target of the grammarian is to expand the vocabulary that you are having. The more word we present in the meetings, the wider, the wider your storage of words is gonna become. So when you speak in front of anyone next time, you will be having so much variety in your language. Then we have the timer. Some people think that the timer is the very simplest role to take up, whereas it's very important and crucial. The timer is responsible to time not only the meeting, but each segment and slot of the meeting. He is also responsible to ensure that the speaker or the person who is carrying a project is within the allocated time that the project is assigning him to. He has a light, he can have a timer, he can have, it depends on what the club are using. It might be color card, it might be a device, and they will continue showing the different colors according to the timings that the speaker is having. Moving forward, we have something called the Toastmaster. Some people call it Toastmaster of the day, other call it Master of Ceremonies, as we are having today. This person, you can think about him as the host, the director, the person who is standing there, presenting everyone, directing everyone to where to speak, when to speak. He is the person that takes a moment to explain everything to us, the theme, the members, the role player, acknowledging the guests, and so on. Moving forward, we have the topic master, or they call it table topic master. Table topic master is the person who handles the table topic session. Now, what is a table topic session? Is the session where we improve our impromptu speaking skill. The table topic master prepare quotes, scenarios, phrases, and will call a random person from the audience to comment on that for one to two minutes. The person who will be commenting or speaking in the table topic session is the table topic speaker. And again, as I mentioned, the target of the table topic session is to improve our impromptu speaking skills. This is very beneficial for you when you go to interviews in a real life, into meetings, anyone or anyone 
can direct any question to you, you will be able to handle it very well. Then we have the meeting speaker. The meeting speaker are the people who are participating and giving speeches, projects, presentation, and workshop depending on what their path is assigning them to. Some speakers can be a non-project speaker. He might be a guest speaker. But what I'm trying to do and say here is that they deliver to you a piece of information or a knowledge or a presentation or a training to you in the middle of the session. Then we have two types of evaluators. We have the normal evaluator who will evaluate the speaker or the person who will give a presentation or a workshop. And his target is to ensure that the speaker achieves the objectives of the project he's handling. He's within the allocated timing. He highlights the areas that he believes he can improve upon and so on. Whereas the general evaluator, you can think about him as our father. He sits there, look at all the kids, and at the end of the meeting, he stops us and tells us what to do and what not to do. The general evaluator is the person who evaluates the entire meeting on a larger scale. He is the person who will give us tips and tricks to improve. He is the person who will highlight the area that we excelled at and that he believed we did a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the meeting roles. Comment down below and tell us what is your favorite meeting role and which one you like to choose most of the time because we are virtual here and I want to like know you. Let's know each other in the chat box and let me know which meeting role is your favorite. Ooh, I like to be the general evaluator as well. I'm naturally bossy, so I like to boss around professionally. <laughs> Tabletable master is a nice one as well. You can hear people's thoughts depending on what topic you want to discuss. Yeah, get commenting and let's know each other. Let's move now to the leadership roles, please, moderator. Thank you so much. Now, the majority are familiar with the role players in a meeting. If you are new to the Toastmaster, I'm assuming you need more information in the leadership role or what we call the club officers. Now, what are the club officers? Think about them as the management of a company. Think about them as the kind of fancy people who are having more responsibility to do. Yeah, these are the leadership role or the club officers. Now, each club has a group of people who are handling and managing the entire club on the entire term. For example, myself, Toastmaster Sarah Tahir, the vice president of education of young adult Toastmaster Club in Bahrain, starting from July 1st, 2021, until next year, June 30th, 2022. So this, the officers are being elected annually. Some clubs do have semi-annually, depending on which club you belong to, and they are being changed every term. All officers, they have duties and responsibilities that they have to commit to, to ensure that the club is moving forward towards success. Now, some of the responsibilities that they are having it shared are as below. They should attend the district officer training. Now, when you take any role in Toastmasters, it is not random. You're not gonna just be thrown there. You will receive a training, someone gonna speak to you about it, someone going to prepare you. And that's what's happened in district officer training. It is where the club officers, the leadership roles go, and then they learn more about the duties that they need to have. They need to participate in the club success plan and distinguished club program. I know these two phrases are new to you. Think about them as the plan that push the club forward, that push the club to be better and a better standing, whether it's club, whether it is educationally, whether it is membership wise, distinguished club program and club success plan ensure that the members at the club are heading towards where they are supposed to go. They, sh they should attend club executive, executive officer meetings. These are meetings other than the regular meeting where only the management, as we said, they attend and discuss the club matters. And then also they should attend the normal club meetings as well to ensure that everything is under control and going on the right path. So the XCOM are seven roles, the different responsibilities, different ideas, different jobs. 
starting with the president. And then we have the vice president of education, the vice president of membership, the vice president of public relations. Then we have Sergeant at Arms Secretary and past immediate president. Now, these people come together, their duties might be like a collaboration between each other to achieve their duties and responsibilities to perfection. Let's start with the president. Now, the president, we can think about him as the CEO, the fancy person, the biggest person. He is the person who will take the final decision, obviously based on discussion. It's not going to be just random forcing everyone to do something. No, everything in Toastmaster comes and happens within agreement, within voting, for example, but he is the person who will say the final word. He presides at executive meetings. Again, executive meetings are the meetings where only the management gather to discuss the club matters. They also He also sets the club's vision and provide leadership. The president is there to be an example for the members. He is there to direct everyone. He is there to be the leader that everyone should follow to become better individuals. The person after the president is the vice president of education. I want you to think as vice president of education as the brain of the club, the mastermind. Without him, it's gonna be kind of difficult to arrange the meeting. Why? Because he's responsible of arranging the meeting kind of A to Z. He scheduled the speeches and arranged the agenda. Now that's really depend on you, on your club. Some people, when they arrange the agenda, do it like three, four months in advance. They have a schedule. Hey, person A, you will speak in October. Person B, you will speak in November. Some people do two meetings ahead. Some people do phone calls. Some people do WhatsApp. Others do formal emails. It's completely depending on how the club wants to approach it. But as long as the job is being done very professionally, that's the target of the vice president of education. He's also concerned about the new member orientation program and mentoring program. Now, when you are a new member, for sure, the vice president of education and the vice president of membership sat with you, discussed with you everything regarding the Toastmaster. The VPE, one of his duty is to ensure that the new member is having all the information he needs to start his journey. He also provide him with a mentor where that person can refer back to in case he need any help. He is also responsible for tracking member progress. Each member has a path. Vice President of Education can be, you know, I'm the VP, I can handle such incidents in my club. <clears throat> so as I said, the VP as well have other duties which he need to handle is that, for example, he should have backup fl plans if their original plan did not work out. They are also responsible of maintaining a scheduling system. They should have in their mind what's gonna happen next. They are responsible of submitting education completion. Now you are doing your path. Your path has levels. Once you achieve a level, you should submit that you achieved it. Now the VPE is the person who assigned you the role. He heard the evaluator. He knew if you achieved the targets of your level or not. So he's the one who should be approving that you completed your project and your level, and now you can move further. He also, as well, if the president is not available for any reason, he might be sick, he might be outside the country, he might be facing some internet issues. The VPE is the person who should replace the president and act as a president when the president cannot make it to the meeting. Moving forward, we'll be speaking about the vice president of membership. The vice president of membership not only deals with the guests, but as well as with the members. The vice president of membership, or as we call it, the VPM, is responsible of being in contact with the guests. They send them invitation. He thanks them for showing up. He prepared them if they are if they need more information about Toastmasters. So then when a, one of the guests is converted to a member, he's responsible of registering that member on the Toastmaster International website and running out the induction ceremony. He's also responsible of building the club membership. That means he should sustain the number of the members available and build on it to become larger and better. 
Now, regarding signing members' manuals, back then, instead of pathways, there was manuals. So the vice president of membership was responsible of signing the manuals upon completion. And he also submit the education completion besides the VPE in the website. And in the absence of the president, as well as the vice president of education, the vice president of membership can be acting president in that meeting. Moving forward, we have the vice president of public relationships. Now, this person, you can think about him as our publicity, as our social media, as our advertising manager, depending on what you want to call him. This person is responsible of bringing the club in a way that attract the guests to us. He is responsible of advertising the club. He should advertise through also something called club newsletter. You might think, what is a newsletter, Sarah? Club newsletter, you can think about it as a magazine where the members of the club participate with articles, participate with scripts that other people can read and know more about. As I said, he publicized the club events. If the club participate in a bowling tournament, if the club participate in a marathon, he put it out there. He also prepared the publicity materials. It might be pens, it might be t-shirts, it might be brochures, depending on what the club is trying to do. He also presides meeting in the absence of the president, vice president of education, as well as the VPM. Moving forward, we have the secretary. Think about the secretary as the Google Drive. He has everything we need in records. The secretary is responsible of the meeting minutes. He attends the meeting minutes of the club as well as the executive meetings, and he writes down every note that we need. He also keeps the club constitution and bylaws. Each club have their own bylaws. And if you are a new member and your club did not share it with you, then ask for it. It's absolutely fine. You need to know where you belong. You need to know what you have to obey and what are you allowed to do and not to do. He also prepares and mails orders for the Toastmasters supplies. Anything the club needs, anything the club lacking, like ribbons, uh, notebooks, anything the club is deciding to buy, such as supply, then it's the secretary who's doing that. He also maintain and update the membership rooster. Now, as we said, the management team, or as we call them, the XCOM members, are people that are being changed yearly. So the secretary's responsibility is to log in and update the membership rooster on the international website. As I said, he records and reads the meeting minutes in each meeting, and he maintains the club literature. When we have the, sir, the treasurer, sorry, the treasurer is our bank. The treasurer is our credit card. The treasurer is our debit card. The treasurer is everything that has to do with money. He prepared the annual budget for the club with the help obviously of the president since he has his goals and his targets of the meeting. He collect payable dues and fees and fees. Now the treasurer, the treasurer is the person who will contact you like, hey, person A, you need to pay that much as your membership. And hey, person B, you forgot to pay your membership and so on. So once he collects the money, he is responsible as well to renew our membership on the international website and pay the dues. He also carry any work that has to do with the banks. That's only if the club is having a bank account or any relationship share account, depending on how large and big the club is. As I said, notifies the member and rating of dues. He also gave them checks, for example. He also gave them receipts if they paid. As I said, he also issues checks and pays the dues for the members on the website. And he also presents a verbal or written financial report monthly to the club to show the club and the members where we are standing financially. And he keep records of financial transactions in case we need to refer back to them. Last but not least, oh, it's not last, before the last, the sergeant at arms. Now, this is one of the easiest role to handle. You can take the role sergeant at arm to get to know the other rules and explore and be part of the XCOM. He is responsible for arranging the room, the equipment. Equipment can be a laptop, notebooks, pens, markers, depending what the club is owning. 
He greets the guests and the members since he's early there. He's the one who opened the meeting, prepared the meeting room. So he's also getting engaged with the guests. He's also supposed to maintain all clubs equipment and materials. You will be saving them with them, checking them, check if we do not, if we need to order further materials. That's all in his hand. He collects ballots and tallies. Now, when we were having physical meetings, we used to vote physically uh, all days. We used to vote physically. We used to give out notes. So he's responsible of collecting all these uh, votes and tallies to the whoever is presenting. He also he also participates in the executive committee meetings plus the normal regular meetings. Immediate past president. Someone might think, why do we even need the immediate past president there? In Toastmaster International, we build on the top of each term. They are not 100% separated. So we need the immediate past president there because he knows 100% where the club is standing. He knows what we achieve, what we need to achieve further. He knows all the good and bad about the club. So he's there like a mentor for the new president to direct him and tell him what we achieve and what we need to achieve. He's the chair, the nominating committee as well for the upcoming term. He helps with the distinguished club program and success plan program. As I said, these are plans and programs that ensure that the club achieve its targets. He promotes the club's effort to become distinguished club. He achieved gold. He wants us to achieve even further goal. And he provides the guidance and serve as a resource to the club officers and members. Ladies and gentlemen, by that, I covered all the roles. I know it's a lot of information. Now, it is important for me to let you know that you will receive so many information today. And the good thing, none of that you need to memorize. You will just get used to it. I consider myself a new member, by the way, and I was exactly feeling exactly how you are feeling today. The more you stick to it, the more you will know about it. It's like a video game. The more you play, the more good you will get. And the longer you play, the greater the levels you will be unlocking. Wow, that's really nice and kind of you. I'm grateful that I gave you so much information today. With that, I apologize if I'm over time and I will hand back over to the Master of Ceremonies.